Hello everyone. So here is an update on my fitness goals. I was going to try and lose weight and go down below 165 pounds, maybe even to like 160 or 155. But I started watching a few videos on DEXA scans in the last month or so. So I decided before I make any other decisions, I want to see what my body specifications were like and go from there. I wanted to get a DEXA scan for months so I finally decided to get one. So at the beginning of the week, on Monday, I scheduled an appointment for a DEXA scan with the local DEXA Fit affiliate, and they're running a special that included their Fit 3D offering. So I signed up for both, and then uh, two days ago on Friday, I stopped by and I was tested on those two things. So basically, it is worse than I thought. And I'm going to put on screen some of my statistics and then go down the list in this video so you can see what they are and you know why I'm changing my mind on weight loss and switching to a body recomposition plan. So as a point of interest, most of these measurements are a little better than the ones that I wrote down a few months ago when I was using essentially a measuring tape to take them all. Um, and with the calculations I made, uh, based on those dimensions. So um, a little bit of good news in here, but there's a little bit of bad news too. So I'm going to point out in these lines which were better and which were worse than expected. So let's start off with the forearm measurements. You know, I was measured on both sides, left and right, and I'm just going to put the lowest number for each of the you know, two sides of anything as a baseline so you can kind of see what I'm working with. And the differences were, were not that great, but my forearm uh, circumference is 11.5 uh, inches, and that's a little bit better than the 11 that I'd measured. The biceps are 13.2, which is a little bit better than 13 even that I measured. The neck is 16 inches uh, round, as opposed to the 15.5 that I'd measured. Uh, the quads are actually worse than what I'd measured at 21.6. The ones that I measured were like 22 and change. And so that's actually uh, where things got a little bit worse in terms of what the measurements were. My waist is 38.9. That is, again, better. Pretty much all the other stats are better. Um, uh, the hips are 38 inches. The chest is 42.4, which is a little bit bigger than, than I expected. And the calves are 16 inches, which are the measurements were like 15.5 before. So, again, that's a little bit better. Uh, Starting from this point onward, these other calculations were not something that I've ever really compared before, but the waist to hip ratio is 1.01 to 1, and so it's a slightly greater waist to hip ratio, and that android slash gynoid ratio is apparently identical to the waist to hip ratio in terms of measurement, and total volume, etc. So that's uh, something to consider as well. My trunk to leg volume is 1.4, and just to give you a little bit of perspective there, a 1 is about average, so 1.4 is below average, and a 0 0.8 is about as good as you can get. It's near perfect as far as an athlete, and I'm way far away from that. And then my BMI, which I pretty much knew what it was anyways, is at least according to the measurement here, exactly 25.0 which uh, is at the very top of the healthy weight range you know, for your average sedentary or low activity uh, participant. Um, so the low end is typically 18.5, the high end is 25.0 before you start getting into the overweight and then later on obese category. So uh, this is good on my part, but considering how lean, uh, how little lean body mass I have, uh, there are other things I need to focus on beyond uh, the body mass index. My basal metabolic rate is 1634, which is a little bit lower than the calculations that I've made, uh, but I'm coming to find out that is pretty, pretty darn accurate, at least from my day-to-day -day experiences using a roughly 2,000 calorie per day diet and the very moderate amount of activity I do beyond resting day-to-day, uh, -day, week to week. And what is even worse is my fat weight it's 48.20 pounds of fat weight, which would not be too bad if I was at a really large heavy weight, but considering I'm at roughly 169.5, 170 pounds, etc., 48 pounds of fat weight is, is pretty high. 
Incidentally, my visceral fat, in other words, all the fat you have in your body is subcutaneous, but even below that, the fat closest to your organs and surrounding it and protecting it um, is just under a pound. So that's a little bit less than I anticipated, but I guess overall it's, it's still probably more than I need. And my skeletal weight is just under eight pounds, 7.9 pounds. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So the two most important calculations um, to me are essentially my body fat percentage and my total lean body weight. So the two measurements I was given between the DEXA scan and the FIT 3D was 26.1 for the DEXA scan itself. That's this part here. And the FIT 3D measurement, which is a different sort of calculation, was 28.46, a little bit worse. So between these two, that's higher than what I had uh, expected, which is right around, I think, about 25%, something like that. And my lean body weight was 119.1, according to the DEXA scan, and 121.3 for the FIT 3D uh, uh, scan that was done. And both of these are worse than the 127 calculations that I did using like the Navy body fat calculator and the calculations I did for my various dimensions. So the good news is there is no real imbalance between my left side and my right side, either with my arms or legs or on my trunk. It's approximately 1% overall uh, and varies a little bit beyond that in any case. So that's pretty good. That shows I'm pretty well balanced left to right. That's better than I expected. But I also looked at the litany of suggestions that were made for the various categories that I've just listed above and I sort of compiled them uh, here. So first of all, I need to decrease my body fat percentage through good nutrition and exercise. I need to increase the density of my body by building essentially the muscle overall and in particular my legs considering according to my measurements my leg mass is actually the lagging body part and i've got to also decrease decrease my waist circumference which will of course occur by reducing body fat and gaining muscle i need to also do high intensity interval training or hit hit anyways uh I need to do lifting weights and some low intensity cardio wouldn't hurt, I'm sure. You know, maybe no more than 30 minutes at any time, maybe three or four times a week. I'll be working on that. I need to eat more protein and of course I need to stay hydrated, so plenty of water here. And I need to have good nutrition overall. And uh, I need to decrease the midsection uh, circumference by reducing visceral fat and particularly by increasing leg volume in terms of uh, you know, weight training, as I've mentioned uh, about a minute ago. So more importantly, for myself at least, I've finally completely come to the realization that I can only lose so much more weight. If I lose any more weight, I'll also lo lose more lean body weight. And I'm skinny fat as it is right now, really skinny fat. So you need to focus on all the body parts to gain the most muscle. So in other words, I'm not just going to work arms, you know, and you know, traps and chest or whatever. I've got to work legs. I've got to work calves. I've got to work forearms, uh, even neck training. I've got to consider that. So I'm going to be focusing on body recomposition from now on. So this channel had been up to this point, more focused on weight loss and going from 190 down to 165 or even potentially less based on things. But I'm now comfortable with just maintaining my weight at about 170, 169 pounds and maybe over time reducing to about 165, but certainly not going above 170. But I'm fine with staying where I'm at and working out, switching to, to strength training. So I'm just going to spell it out for me to lose weight and be at 15% body fat. So let's say we're gonna, I was going to not do any weight training or only do very little weight training, and I would go from 170 down to whatever it needs for me to go to 1 to 15% body fat. At 120 pounds or so body weight, and 15% on top of that in terms of everything else, you know, fat and whatever, um, I would be roughly 135, 136 pounds. That's not good. And if I didn't lose any lean mass whatsoever while cutting, and then I lost magically 34 pounds of body fat, that is where I would be. And that's practically impossible without perfect bodybuilding and using some performing enhancements. So I'm just going to focus on A, intuitive eating, and B, I'm going to prioritize the food types that I have in that diet. 
And then C, I'm going to also focus on physical weight training, strength training, you know, powerlifting, bodybuilding exercises as accessory work, and uh, some high intensity interval training as well as uh, some low intensity cardio. I'm going to eat when I'm hungry and I'm not going to eat when I'm satisfied, right? That makes sense. And the way to make intuitive eating work is to essentially narrow down the types of food that you can consume. So you have basically a basket of the types of foods you approve of eating and then all the other things fall by the wayside. And you try to pick the healthiest types of foods in that basket. And then of course you track your calories to ensure that you don't go overboard. But otherwise you don't have to target macronutrients as much if your food choices from the ground level are good. So high protein and high fat foods are what I'm going to focus on at the expense of simple carbs and any carbs that I do choose, I'm going to try to choose the more complex carbs, the carbs that may be come from certain types of vegetables, etc. And that would be a great foundation to work from. Now keep in mind, I count my calories every single day, every single meal, no matter what I eat, I track that. I've been tracking that since Halloween of 2010. So I know what I'm doing here as far as that. But in addition to that, I'm going to be eating healthier foods and limiting my selection to a range of foods like that. So I already eat meals of a certain size so that I know that I can, what I can consume without going over limit. For example, I rarely eat meals over a thousand calories and I usually eat twice daily. You know, although sometimes I'll make an exception for a dessert or a snack, but on average I take in about 2,000 calories a day and I've been pretty darn consistent with that, averaging roughly 170 pounds for the last almost eight months. Also, I weigh myself at least once weekly and if I go beyond a certain weight, like above 172, I start to restrict myself in terms of eating for the next few days. And usually by the next time I weigh in the following Sunday, uh, I'm in good shape. So like just for example, this morning I weighed in at 169 pounds even. I also rarely drink anything with calories, so that helps greatly. And I also rarely eat unhealthy foods, or rather there's a quality floor on the level of foods that I put into my body. For fast food, for example, I might go as low as Subway or Wingstop. Um, most meals that I eat at home are typically for dinner, and my wife makes generally good foods. So I almost never eat snack foods like Cheetos and pretzels and whatever, stuff like that. So I'm usually in pretty good shape nutritionally. So lastly, I'm fine with walking and cycling for cardio, and I'm going to consider doing sprints um, and other types of high intensity cardio, maybe even swimming uh, or basketball from time to time. But I want to focus on weight training in particular. And also once a week, I'm going to try to play some disc golf, you know, go out with some friends and just hang out and try to relax and have some more physical activity beyond the typical strength and endurance training you might expect. So anyways, that's just it. I wanted to go over uh, this here. There was a lot of uh, bad news in this report that I'm using to inform my current decisions. And just, we're going to play it from here. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.